As you gain more experience with setting keys, you'll come to realize that what actually controls the speed of what you're animating, in other words, how fast or how slow things change, is the spacing of the keyframes that you've created. When two side-by-side -side keys are positioned close in proximity to each other on the timeline, whatever those keys have been programmed to change will change quickly. If you were to instead simply spread those keys farther apart, in other words, move one or the other to a new location on the timeline, the same thing would change, it would just end up happening a little slower. So it's the spacing of your keys that controls the timing of your animation. Whether things happen abruptly, or whether it takes a little time for the action to unfold. When working on your own projects, you're going to find yourself constantly shifting keys in position in order to slug out the timing of what's been animated. Moving keys is something you'll definitely need to feel comfortable in doing, and all the time. Let's take a look at how it's done using a file named Move Key Markers, which can be found in the Working Files folder. Our job will be to have both objects move directly across the screen to the right. One will make the trip in 50 frames, while the other will take 100. Let's go ahead and select the top green marker and we'll activate Auto Key. We'll now move to frame 50 and slide the object directly across the screen to the right hand side. Looking down on the timeline, you'll see the two keys that have been created. Let's now go ahead and grab our time slider, scrubbing from left to right. OK, now we'll select the red marker, moving to frame 100 and sliding it to the right hand side also. So both objects are traveling the same distance. Let's go ahead now and play that back with the forward slash. Notice the green object on the top is making its way to the other side of the screen much quicker than the red marker below it. Why do you think that is? Well, what's controlling it moving in the first place? It's the keyframes, right? And that's exactly why it moves faster. The green marker was keyed to go from one side to the other in 50 frames, while the red marker on the bottom was keyed doing the same thing, but instead over 100 frames. So it's the spacing of the keys that controls both objects' speed, or rate of change in other words. If we wanted the top object to move at the same speed as the bottom, we'd simply want to move the top marker's second key, because that's the one that stores its position on the right hand side of the screen, we'd want to move that key to 100. Here's how that's done. Let's go back and select the top marker, then locate its key at frame 50. We can then select that key by clicking directly on it. It'll turn white as a result. Positioning our mouse on top of the key, you'll see the cursor change to a two-way arrow. When you see that, you're ready to move the key. Slide it now from 50 to frame 100 on the timeline. Now once you've done that, let's return to the front of our animation and play things back. Moving the green marker's keyframe at 50 to 100 now has us matched up in time. If we like the way that both markers reach the far right side at frame 100, but we wanted the bottom marker not to leave its starting position until, let's say, one second into the animation, how would we do that? Well, it currently starts its trek to the right at frame 0. We'd simply move that key back to frame 30. Let's do it. We'll select the red marker, locate its starting key at frame 0, moving it to frame 30. Let's go ahead and play that back. Now, both markers arrive at the right-hand side at frame 100. The bottom one simply waits one second before making its move. And because of that, now has its keys spaced closer together, making it move faster to reach the other side. Let's take a look at another example. This is a file named MoveKeyTeapot. It can be found in the Working Files folder. Let's say that we want our teapot to spin and look the other way over two seconds. Let's select the teapot, then activate Auto Key using the N shortcut. We'll now activate the Rotate command, heading over to frame 60. So we can get the number of degrees, 180, right on the dime, let's activate the Angle Snap. We can do that up on the toolbar, or simply type A. OK, let's grab the blue ring on the transformation gizmo, and spin our teapot around 180 degrees. As you're rotating, you'll be able to see the number of degrees both above the gizmo and down below the timeline. When you have things in place, we'll return to the first frame, playing things back. Let's say that we're thinking it's rotating a little too fast. We like the fact that it's going 180 degrees around, we just think it's doing all that a little too quickly. What'll slow it down? Moving its back key back. The keyframe at frame 60 completes its rotation. If we move that key back to let's say 90, it'll still rotate the same number of degrees, it'll just take a little longer to finish up. 
Let's select the keyframe at 60 on the timeline, moving it back to frame 90. Once we've done that, we'll play things back. Notice how it's now spinning slower, having a longer time frame in order to do what we've asked it to do. If we like it completing its rotation at 90, but want it to start spinning around a little later in the animation, well again, it's just moving a key. This time, taking its starting key at frame 0 a little farther back along the timeline. Let's say that we'll hold it for one second before making it spin. We'll select the keyframe at 0, sliding it back to frame 30. Let's play that back. Now, what about this? Let's say that we still want it to take 3 seconds to finish its rotation. Well, frame 30, with a 3 second spin, takes us out to frame 120. So now, we don't have enough time on our timeline. That's not hard to fix, we'll simply add a few more frames. Let's head back down to the right hand side of the interface, opening up our time configuration. Now we can do that by either clicking on the icon, or right clicking on any of the playback arrows. On the left hand side of the dialog, about halfway down in the animation section, we'll change the end time to 120. Once we've locked that in by pressing enter, we can say OK. With our additional frames now down on the timeline, we can select the key at 90, moving it back to 120. Once we've done that, let's play things back. Now we've got our 1 second delay, then a 3 second spin. Let's try one more example. This is a file that can be found in the Working Files folder for this chapter, called Move Key Path Deform. What we've got here is a cylinder traveling from one end of the path to the other by means of a Path Deform modifier. If you select it, down on the timeline you'll see the keys that are propelling it across the screen. The length of the animation being 200 frames. Let's say that we'd like our yellow object to stay where it's at for 50 frames, then travel to the other end, arriving there at frame 150. That'll require us to move both the front and back keys. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll start by selecting the key at 0, moving it back to frame 50. Look below the timeline on the left. Max is specifically telling you just exactly where you're going as you move the key around. Now, the back key at frame 200. Let's take that to frame 150. OK, let's return to the start of our animation using the Home key, and we'll play things back. You see the cylinder now moving faster due to having fewer frames in between the two keys. If we like when it starts, but want it to go even faster still, we can move the key at 150 closer toward the front, let's say to maybe frame 130. Again, below the timeline on the left, Max is giving you an update as to where the key is moving. Let's play that back and see how it looks. Now the cylinder has picked up a little additional speed as it traverses across the screen. Now, one more scenario. Let's say that we like the speed that it's going, we just want to take the entire animation a little closer back to the front. Now there's nothing holding us back from moving both keys at the same time. Let's do this, we'll window select both keys on the timeline. Then grabbing the front key, we'll slide the entire animation back in time, so that the cylinder starts on its journey at let's say, frame 20. Why don't we now shorten our timeline using the Control alt right mouse combo. I'll hold the keys down, position my mouse around 90 on the timeline, then push to the right. When you see frame 100 matching to the right hand side of the timeline, you can go ahead and let go. OK, let's play it back again. So there you go with moving keyframes. Now you're going to be doing it all the time, so remember the techniques and be sure to put them to use in your own projects. I'm going to save this up as Move Key Path Deform Completed if you'd like to take a look.